Hi guys, Lazar here. Welcome back to another exciting tutorial where we continue our series of recreating buildings from famous architects. Today we are all about the Cactus Tower located in central Copenhagen. These cool residential buildings were designed by none other than big architects. Alright, let's get started with this journey and please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more cool stuff like this. Now let's dive right in. First off, let's have a look at the floor plan of the project. We got a single model here, which includes apartment plus a balcony. And this model is multiplied 8 times in a circle. The number of divisions within a model dictates the shape of the polygon that will be created. For our case, each model has one division and contains two apartments, which means our polygon will have 16 sides. Next, let's create a 16-sided polygon on the XY plane. Since a polygon should have at least 8 sides, one model per division, we'll use 8 as our base value for the number of polygon sides. I'm going to multiply this by another variable. In our case, I'll set a slider to 2. This will define two divisions within a single model and a 16-sided polygon. Now we're going to draw a square that our polygon can fit in perfectly. For this, we'll use a bounding box to get a neat square surface. To get the floors, we're going to multiply this square surface along the Z axis. This is where we define our floor height and the number of floors. Now let's go back to our diagrams. You'll notice the floors are rotated, so we need to figure out by how much and understand the logic behind it. The rotation angle isn't chosen randomly. It's actually derived from dividing the angle of 8 of the polygon, which is 45 degrees, by the number of divisions inside the model. So for instance, if we set the number of divisions inside the model to 3, we would divide the 45 degree angle by 3. The reasoning behind floor rotation is simple. Each floor is rotated by a negative or positive angle relative to the floor below and above it. To achieve these angles, I'm going to create a list of 1 and minus 1. The list should have the same number of items as our number of floors. We'll shuffle this list using a jitter component and the shuffled minus 1 and 1 values will be multiplied by the angle we calculated earlier. Moving on, I'll perform mass addition on our list of angles. The list of partial results will give us our rotation angles. Remember to convert them into radians and add rotation planes. Our rotated surface are then going to be extruded to get the thickness of the floor. We can make the glass surface by multiplying our polygon along Z axis using the same values that we use for the floors. Load these polygons to get the surface and then trim a single glass surface with the floor geometry. Now let's shift our focus to creating walls. First, we'll extract the corner points of all polygons and connect them with their corresponding centers. The lines from this output will then be extended. The length of the extension will match the radius of the polygon. Next, I'll trim these extended lines using the scaled polygons from the same level. These polygons will be scaled down by about 0.33. These trim lines will then be trimmed once again, this time with rotated floors from the same level. Keep a close eye on your data tree here. I use the trim tree component to make sure we have the same number of branches as we do floors. Alright, now each line will be offset in both directions. This is so we can get the thickness of the walls later. The offset distance will be 0.1. Again, we'll trim these lines using the corresponding floor surface and once again watch that data tree. To match the number of branches without floors, we'll trim two layers of branches inside the data tree. 
since we already defined the thickness of the floors, I'll move the offset lines along the Z direction by the same value that we used to extrude the floors. To correctly create the wall surfaces, we are going to use the relative items component. This is very important part. Our trim lines will go into input A and the lines moved along Z direction will go into input B. To correctly make the wall surfaces, we are going to need to loft pairs of lines placed in different branches. More specifically, lines from input A will be lofted with the lines from input B, but from one main branch lower. That's why the relative offset will be minus 1, 0. Next, we'll merge outputs A and B and create a loft surface from pairs of lines. Following this, I will extract the surface outline, trim the data tree so all the point lines on the same level are in the same branch. From this list, I'll create pairs of point lines or pairs of items using the partition list component and create a loft surface. And in the final step, we'll apply the cap component to create a closed B-Wrap. In the extended version of this tutorial, we're going to continue building up our project. We are specifically going to focus on bringing more realism to the building by transforming glass surfaces to 3D geometry, making walls flat and adding railings on the balconies. Now let's talk about some real gems. We'll show you how to import realistic trees and people from Chaos Cosmos right into Grasshopper. And it's going to be a game changer. And the best part, we'll teach you how to scatter them easily throughout your model. And believe me, there is not much material out there covering this, so consider yourself lucky to have stumbled upon this tutorial. You can watch it on our Patreon page and support our work at the same time. With that, you will also get access to all of our other extended tutorial and product files. Take care.